Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. During yesterday's presidential address, Polish President Andrzej Duda referred to the problems of the world today. Duda said that he believes that 2021 will be a good year for Poles. He also said that he hopes that thanks to the coronavirus vaccine, it will be possible for Poland to return to the path of rapid development. In the coming year, we have to strengthen the Polish economy. It depends on us how quickly we will be able to return to the path of rapid development. I hope we will be able to get back to the normal functioning of all the private and public institutions as soon as possible. We welcome the new year 2021 with hope. We hope it will be better. We begin the new year wiser thanks to the difficult experiences we gained. We had to change our habits and behaviour. Our everyday life during the pandemic made us realise how much we need each other. That is why this is also the time of great kindness, openness and readiness to help and support others. I wish that all the good stays with us even after the pandemic ends. Dear compatriots, let us begin 2021 full of faith and hope to meet the challenges which are ahead of us in the next 12 months in our private and professional lives. I believe that 2021 will be a good year for Poles and Poland. Pope Francis reappeared today after chronic sciatic pain had forced him to miss the New Year's celebrations. He made no mention of his illness as he delivered his traditional appeal for world peace. He showed no signs of discomfort as he delivered a noon address and prayer standing at a lectern in the Library of the Apostolic Palace. The painful events that marked humanity's journey last year, especially the pandemic, taught us how much it is necessary to take an interest in the problems of others and to share their concerns, he said. Pope Francis highlighted in particular his worries about Yemen, which has been blighted by six years of violence that has pitted a Saudi-led coalition against the Iran-aligned Houthis movement. I express pain and concern in the further escalation of violence in Yemen, which is causing numerous innocent victims. I pray that efforts will be made to find solutions that allow the return of peace for these battered populations. Brothers and sisters, let us think of the children of Yemen without education, without medicine, starving. Let us pray together for Yemen. 2020 will be remembered as a year which brought Belarus to world headlines. The country's citizens once again learned that democracy is just a facade under the authoritarian rule of Alexander Lukashenko. For Belarusians, the most important date is the 9th of August, the date of the disputed presidential election. From that day, the spirit of the country changed. Although on Tuesday, 29th December, the ruler of Belarus organized a ball in the presidential palace with hundreds of young army officers waltzing around, things are far from smooth for the country's strongman. First of all, opposition leaders accuse him of jailing more than 30,000 people for participation in the mass protests. The European Union and the United States have expanded sanctions on Belarus, targeting four entities and 40 individuals for their roles in the disputed presidential election and the government's subsequent crackdown on protesters. According to reports from Minsk, Lukashenko is praising the armed forces that helped him to retain power. He said to the right policemen that he will stay in power, shoulder to shoulder with them, unless they tell him to leave. The head of Minsk's special purpose police unit, Dmitry Balaba, presented Lukashenko with a black beret, a mark of distinction of the elite force. Lukashenko kissed the beret in thanks and said that he is a right police officer now too. For citizens who demand a fair election, this does not look like a good omen for 2021. They promised to make things rough for us, Belarusians, on this New Year's Eve. Let them try. I'm telling you up front and honest, and let them bear hear it. If the people in uniforms did not deserve their lot, and if back in those days in August you reel back, Today we would live in another country, and the question is whether we would be living at all, whether this country would exist. Until the last riot policeman tells me to leave, I am staying in this country, shoulder to shoulder with you, because neither you nor I have anything but this land, this country. At the stroke of midnight, Central European time, 11 p.m. last night in London, the transition period ended, marking the de facto end of the United Kingdom's membership of the European Union, following its formal departure on the 31st of January last year. This brings to an end four and a half years of uncertainty following the June 23, 2016 referendum, where 17.4 million voters, or 52%, backed Brexit, while 16.1 million, or 48%, backed staying in the bloc. 
After haggling over a trade deal for months, the British government has published 70 pages of case studies just hours before its departure, advising companies on what rules they would have to follow at the new UK-EU border. Some disruption is expected at borders as trading and travel resumes after the New Year holiday, with more red tape meaning more costs for those importing and exporting goods across the EU-UK border. Residents of Dover on Friday welcomed the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union after 48 years of tempestuous relations with its nearest neighbours. I think we should go back to the, you know, keep calm and carry on like it was in the Second World War. I mean, there's no point in being negative about it because what's the alternative? You just have to get on with it, follow the rules and do what you can and go walking a lot. I'm really happy. Um, Brexit's been a long time coming. We've been seeing too much of it on the news. It's been so political when Boris has just done it, he's nailed it. We're in a much better place. Uh, happy that we've left. I think we've now got control of our own destiny and we haven't got to pay any more money to the Europe at the moment in time. So, yeah, happy that we've left. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better 2021.